everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing to you my November TBR. It is a very tentative November TBR because I have been slowly but surely falling into quite the reading slump recently and I'm trying my best to stop. <laughs> I am teetering on the edge of a slump and I'm trying my best not to fall over into it. So because of that I don't want to force myself to read anything that I'm not in the mood to read. So this month I probably will be doing quite a lot of mood reading just because I want to pick up anything that will actually allow me to read. The books that I've chosen I've got a mixture of a couple that I do really want to read. I I'm really excited to get round to and another couple who that I just think will be a bit easier to read. I know myself when I am falling into a slump the best thing I can read are contemporaries, usually fluffy romances. So because of that I do have a couple of highly anticipated fantasies that I am very excited to read but will be more dense and maybe a little bit more difficult to get through. And a couple of lighter more fluffy looking books. Without further ado, let's just get into the books that I want to read in the month of November. So first and foremost, the most important book on my TBR for this month, and one that I will 100% be getting round to, is Daughter Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. If you don't know, I am co-hosting a readathon for this book and the other two books in the trilogy with some of my best booktube friends, Maddie, Spoops, Ro and Katie. We are hosting a co-hosting a read-along of all three books in the trilogy for the next three months. So we'll be reading the first one in November, the second in December and the third one in January. And we will then be doing a live show at the end of each month discussing the book. And one of the best things about our read along in my opinion is we've got a little bit of a mixture of people in terms of interest in fantasy. So for Maddie, Ro and Katie they are huge fantasy enthusiasts and I believe they have all already read these books. But Spips and I are a bit newer to the fantasy genre and we have never read them. So it'll be interesting to see everyone's differing opinions when we do get round to the live show. So I will link down below the Twitter for the read along and I will also link down below the announcement video that Maddie put on her channel just in case anyone is interested in getting involved with us which would be lovely. I am so excited to read this book. It is going to be my first Lady Taylor book which I know is ridiculous but I am so excited to read it and after that I'll hopefully go on to Strange the Dreamer which is another one that I've heard amazing things about. I am going to be annoying and I'm going to say if you want to know what this book is about then you're going to have to go check yourself because I don't want to know before going into it. I'm already going in with a lot of expectations in terms of quality because I've heard so many amazing things about this trilogy. I do not want to go into it with any expectations in terms of content. <laughs> so all I know is it's fantasy and I'm pretty sure it is a female central character. That's it. And that's all I want to know. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit annoying that one. If you want a synopsis you're going to have to go check for it yourself. But yeah, as I said I've heard amazing things about these novels. I've heard amazing things about Lainey Taylor as a writer and I am just so excited to get around to that one. The second book on my November TBR is another one that I am about 99% sure that I will get around to because it is such a highly anticipated read for me and that is The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I have been dying to read this ever since it was first announced, ever since I heard the premise of it. It just sounds so interesting to me and I've been dying to read more V.E. Schwab because I've read barely any of her work. I have read two, actually well I've listened to two of her two of the audiobooks for her books which were City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones I think which are her middle grade novels about like this little ghost hunter girl which are really good I really enjoyed them and I really enjoyed the writing but I'm yet to read more of her books and more of her sort of young adult books and I've been dying to read this recently because it is all over booktube it is all over bookstagram it is all over book twitter everyone is reading it and everyone is raving about it and I've just been so jealous so when my lovely friend Maddie got in touch with me saying that her lovely mum had been looking through my wish list and seen that I wanted to read this and she was unhauling it anyway um, and offered to send it to me I was so excited and I am so so grateful especially because this is the most beautiful edition like it's gorgeous we all know I love spread edges and I am so excited to get around to reading it so thank you again to Maddie and her lovely mummy. If you don't know I will read the blurb for you. Fran 1714 a desperate woman makes a desperate deal in the dark a bargain to live forever but to be remembered by none. So begins the invisible life of Addie LaRue, shadow muse to artists throughout history, forgotten friend, confidant and lover, slipping away with the morning light. Addie passes through lives, desperate only to leave a trace of herself, until the day she walks back into a small bookshop in Manhattan and meets Henry, who remembers her. 
After 300 years, Addie's life is restarting, but the devil never plays fair. As Henry and Addie's lives start to intertwine, they must face the consequences of the decisions they've made and the prices to be paid. Like, if you don't think that sounds interesting, there's something wrong with you. I am so unbelievably excited to read this. Like I said, I want to read more of the Schwab's work. And just the whole premise of this sounds so interesting. I've heard amazing things and I really can't wait to see how it's done throughout the novel. I do think I'll be getting around to this one very soon because I'm very excited about it. So it's perfect to read when I'm in a slump because I'm so excited about it. And I don't think it's too dense. I could be wrong. Um, but from what I've heard, I think it's quite a fast read. Could be completely Latin when I say that. But yeah, really excited to get around to that one. The last fantasy book on my TBR is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kang. And if you have been watching my videos, you will know that I absolutely adored The Poppy War, which was the first book in this series. I'm not gonna go for another synopsis because I have done it so many times and most people already know what it's about anyway. But yeah, I absolutely adored The Poppy War. I gave it five at five stars. This is the second book in the series which I believe is a trilogy but the third book The Burning God is coming out at the end of this month and therefore I would really love to read the second one before then. As I said I loved the first one and I've been dying to read the second one ever since but I've just I don't know I've just not felt like picking up I've had other th things that I prioritised I guess. Um, the only thing about this one is it is dense and it is a grimdark fantasy so it is more of a difficult read so if I am still feeling slumpy this one might have to get pushed by the wayside because it's not going to be one that is easy to get through and I don't want to ruin either my reading and I also don't want to ruin my opinion of this book by forcing myself to read it when I'm not really up to it if that makes sense. So I'm hoping to read it this month but this is one probably the most likely one to be pushed to side just because of the sort of content and the style of writing might be tricky but I am dying to read it and I will read it at some point soon. The fourth book on my TBR for November is Mr Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore by Robin Sloan and I received this again from Maddie. This is just starting to feel like a bit of a Maddie fan video but she's just a very generous girl obviously. <laughs> Back when I first started Booktube and I received this from her, it's one of her favourite books and I have been looking forward to reading it ever since. It says on the back, Recession has shuffled Clay Jannon out of his life as a web design drone and serendipity coupled with sheer curiosity has landed him a new job working the night shift at Mr Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore. But it doesn't take long for Clay to realise that the quiet dusty book emporium is even more curious than its name suggests. From what I've heard this book is supposed to be quite the page turner. It is nice and short which again is what I'm looking for this month to stop me slumping and I've heard it's quite emotional but quite uplifting and that is the sort of thing I am looking for at the moment so I am really excited to get around to this one. I'm sure a lot of people have it up there in their sort of like top 10 favourite books just because of the content in it. I think it's supposed to be quite witty and fun but like I said also quite emotional and well written and also I just love anything that's set around books in a bookstore, in a library, about books in general so that really excites me as well. The final book on my TBR for November is I Wish You All The Best by Mason Deaver. I bought this book earlier this year, it was in one of my hauls earlier this year but I have just never gotten around to reading it and when I saw it on my bookshelf the other day I just really got the urge to read it so I've put it on my November TBR. Um, it is a contemporary, like I said I wanted to have more of those on my TBR just in case I get slumpy and I need to take a break from the fantasy books so this is one of those. Again I will read the blurb. After coming out to their parents as non-binary, Ben DeBacker is thrown out of their house and forced to move in with their estranged older sister Hannah and her husband Thomas whom Ben has never even met. Struggling with an anxiety disorder compounded by their parents' rejection, they come out only to Hannah, Thomas and their therapist and try to keep a low profile in a new school. But Ben's attempts to survive the last half of senior year unnoticed are thwarted when Nathan Allen, a funny and charismatic student, decides to take Ben under his wing. As Ben and Nathan's friendship grows, their feelings begin to change and what started as a disastrous turn of events looks like it might just be a chance to start a happier new life. So this one obviously sounds like it's absolutely bursting with emotion. I think it will be heartbreaking at points but I think it'll be really uplifting as well. It sounds like it's going to be quite a difficult region parts obviously in terms of Ben's sexuality, gender identity and also dealing with anxiety but the anxiety part is something that I can relate to and I'm always really interested to see that how that is portrayed in books and see if it I relate to the way that it's written. And the relationship between Ben and Nathan just sounds so cute. So I'm hoping for cute vibes and a bit of fun mixed with 
some really hard hitting issues as well. Again, this is a really short book, so it's one that I'd hope that I can get through quite fast and keep my reading up if I am feeling like I'm going to slump. So there you have it, that is all the books that I hope to read in November. Like I said, this is a very tentative TBR, I don't know if I'll get around to all these or not, but there's a few in there that I definitely will. And they're all books that I'm really looking forward to reading so hopefully I'll be able to tick quite a few of them off. But as always if you did enjoy this video then do please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more content, comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings and I will see you in my next one.